I'm honored to be speaking to you guys today about resilience and reinvention. I want to thank the Alumni Society for the opportunity. I'm a 10-year career products and marketing leader here in B2B technology in Silicon Valley and, and the West Coast. Uh, I've developed an expertise in working with B2B startups in marketing and in cybersecurity. Currently, as uh, Ileana said, I'm the chief strategy and marketing officer for True You. It's an early stage company just going to Series A. And while I'm pretty happy with the impact I have with these kind of companies today, where you know I'm helping them focus and their strategy, it always it hasn't always been easy to get here. Uh, I've had two reinventions in my career: one going from tech, then to Wall Street for five years as an equity research an analyst, a totally different type of job, suit and tie, New York City, calling stocks, and then coming back to tech when that industry was hit with the Great Recession in 2008, and I saw structurally there was just no path for me to grow. So I often say I went from being sort of a tech nerd to being a numbers nerd, because at the end of the day, and people on Wall Street are also geeks, but uh, for numbers. And then I came back to being an even bigger tech nerd when I came back to Cisco and was in the networking space. But the good thing is I brought some good fashion from New York, some good coats. Um, I will say that both of these industries are super competitive. Uh, there is this, you can feel like Eliana was mentioning the imposter syndrome. It's a lot of high, type A, highly educated, hard charging people looking for success. Uh, I also recognize there's a lot of burnout in these industries. It's very hard to be out of favor, your sector in the Wall Street area, or you get pigeonholed in some technology, and so you're obsolete. So I think most of us in this industry will have to reinvent themselves at some point in their careers. And for me, uh, the resilience I talk about is more how to maximize your potential. There's obviously resilience with survival, but I'm I think we're all blessed to have gone to great schools, to live in a great country where we can have the basic necessities sort of um, taken care of for, for us. The first thing I've learned is that resilience sort of begin begins with your self-belief and your self-image. And the, the one thing that I know I can control in that is how hard I work and how much I apply myself. And that foundation was sort of built in my upbringing in Texas in the 70s and 80s. Um, my parents were first-generation immigrants from uh, Tamaulipas, Mexico, que viva el norte. And, um, you know, what, three things that I know that they introduced to me was this idea of like work ethic. Uh, my father had hit his limits with what he thought was racism in, in the 70s in Texas, started his own construction business. And I was often out painting houses in the suburbs of Houston on hot summer days, uh, putting suspended ceilings in Red Lobster restaurants and always feeling like I was missing out on my childhood to some extent when I would hear the stories from my Stanford classmates of how they had spent the summer in, in the pool. But I think it made the second lesson really very tangible that education was the only way out. And so there was a big focus in my family for that. And um, you know, I think it, it made it really clear that that's where I needed to apply myself. The last thing was really around my Latinness, my, my Latino-ness. We spent a lot of time in Mexico conviviendo, living with our cousins, in that country, seeing a lot of the country and realizing that they didn't have a lot, but they were super happy. And that in the end, um, it's given me a perspective all the way through my career that I bring with me to all these different environments. Um, I would say since then, uh, I've been adding to something that I call my confidence account. Every time I do something in, in my career, I, I feel that it, it's a challenge. I feel I add to it. So whether it was you know, speaking to 300, 400 people in Peru when I was 22 in Spanish next to these distinguished academics or staying up all night in Wall Street to do three earnings in one night um, and then be, have the energy to project that, that recommendation. It's all these little things sort of added to that. The second part of self-image for me is how I look at my past experiences because I think I can take every one of them and reframe them to the positive or I can reframe them to the negative. You could say, well, you went to Wall Street for five years, you lost those five years, you came back to tech, you could have been a VP or C-level much sooner. But the fact is it, it added something to me that I'm using right now. And um, you know, the same thing is when I started a consultancy two, three years ago, and I'll talk about why I did that. Uh, you know, I still have that LLC, but it didn't turn out to be the agency I wanted, but it changed me fundamentally in terms of who I am. So I think that um, I, I became a much better executive where I'm at today. And so I think you can always look at your past from a, a negative place or you can just start to build, take the, the learnings from it. And actually it's important that you do that for the way you position yourself for the, for the future. When I started Wall Street, I would imagine myself like on TV giving these stock calls. When I built that, that consultancy, I would imagine myself walking into this office 
with 30 people, 40 people working and what the meetings would be like, what would be that culture? What would be our, our all hands meetings? Uh, you know, I've used visualization as a key way to, to believe that, that it's worth it at the end of the tunnel. I think you need two things. One is a belief in yourself and that what you're doing matters. And so I use visualization not only for like one or two years stints, like it's worth getting going through this adversity, but I also use it on a day to day basis. Like when I have to uh, present to the board or what have you, I'm literally thinking about how I come across, how I'm going to connect. And it actually, the times that I've had to work with, work on something up to the last minute and then just get onto it, it doesn't come out as best as, as good as when I sort of visualize myself. And so that's been, when I see hardship or you're going to start on something, that's sort of one of the things I bring, I bring out. I think another thing I learned from these two very different environments is that your life experience is cumulative and it's, and you can take that for granted. When I went to Wall Street, um, within four, it's an apprentice business in equity research. Your analyst teaches you the mechanics of it. And I was doing software research. And when, uh, when I was there four months in, my analyst left the company because of the dispute for money. And for me, it was like, okay, I just switched my career. Uh, am I going to lose my job with this transition? Or am I going to stay, stay on? And my MD actually uh, called me to his office and said, you know what, you got the job. And the reason I got that was because the sales force felt like I was mature, like I knew the industry, the software industry. And even though we needed to do the finances, uh, financial analysis, I was able to bring that maturity and that perspective to the table. That day, there was actually an earnings. And I had never done an earnings by myself. I had done a lot of the mechanics of it, but the analyst was the last person to do it. And I was able to do it over overnight. Um, I, I reread the note several times, rewrote it. I did the analysis. I even waited. I was in LA at the time. I even waited for the New York firms like Goldman Sachs to put out their notes to make sure I hadn't done something wrong, but it, it was, it was on, it was on track. And so I did that in a year and a half later, I was now the, I was, I was uh, star mine ranked as one of the top analysts for, for, for software and equity research. And, and so you just chipped away at that and that added again to that confidence count. The last thing I'll say is um, how to get, I think you need to, I, I needed to get a handle on fear. And I, I did that in the good times. I'm not sure I would do it now, but uh, fear to me has always been like a paralysis. And if you have to adapt to something, some adversity, it can be that. And so I, I felt like I always needed a paycheck to, from someone else to, to be secure. It was just the way maybe my, my upbringing was. Um, it led me to take bad jobs in some cases, the one that was immediately at my disposal. It led me maybe to stay in jobs that I probably should have left earlier because it wasn't a misalignment of my value system to whatever the company was doing or the, or the bad boss above you. And I think um, what I did to attack that was really I started my own business. I, I started that agency slash consultancy. I flew without a safety net. I really wanted to test my metal, my network to see could I generate business opportunities for myself. And you could say that was a failure too. I mean, it was two years. We, I never got to that agency of, of 30 people. Uh, but I will say that I am so much a better executive today after doing that. And, I, you know, in terms of my digital marketing skills, like Eliana's, I, I, I learned that after not having had that from my MBA 20 years ago. So now I combine that with this ability to communicate and this industry knowledge, and it's very powerful. I think um, it showed me my weaknesses. I, I don't love to network. And yet it's something I have to work on. It, um, it did so much for me in terms of growth that it, it showed me how to focus because as an entrepreneur, you have to do so much and you have to know where to play, play your cards and let other people do the work. And so I'm a much better person today. And if you looked at it from the outside, you wouldn't think that. So in the end, I think being resilient is made up of three things that I try to work on. One is my self-belief and how I view it. Uh, two is a mindset of how you approach the challenges. And that's a mindset that I've developed uh, these positive thinking growth mindsets over the last 10 years. Some people have it earlier in their career. I think that's where I had to unwork some of my, my Latino-ness, uh, my, my conservative mother's um, advice for me. And then I think the ability to be courageous and be brave. And I think to me, visualization is one of the biggest tools I use to do that. So the better you get at mastering those things, I think the better you're gonna be from bouncing back at resilience. And, y pues es todo. Y acuérdese que sí se puede y pues que viva el norte.